Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on all things related to narcissism and generally difficult relationships. Today I'm going to kind of go on a little rant about something. It's a mistake all of us make in our conversations. And it, this is not just a mistake made by people who are narcissistic. It's made by all of us. I think we see this mistake, it's more pronounced in narcissistic relationships, but I think it happens to all of us. So we're all guilty of it. So let's hear, you're going to clean up your relationship act today. And what is it? What is the one mistake question we ask in relationships? When we go up to someone, we make the mistake sometimes of making assumptions about how they're feeling. And how do we do this most classically? We go up to someone, partner, family member, and they're just doing their thing, or maybe they're frustrated, and you go up to them and you say, why are you angry? Now, if that person never said, I am angry, then you're making a big conceptual leap. And actually, more often than not, people find it offensive. So you're having a conversation with someone, at no point do they ever say they're angry. Maybe they raise their voice and you assume they're angry, but you are assuming it. So when you ask someone, why are you so angry? Why are you so annoyed? That's one surefire way to annoy a person because you've made an assumption about their intention and their emotional state. Now the person you've just said, why are you angry? They're either going to find themselves in a position where they have to defend themselves. I'm not angry or they may gaslight you, but at some level on that one, that was a question you shouldn't have asked that way in the first place because you made an assumption. The only time you can ever accurately ask someone, why are you angry? Is if they say to you first, hey, Romani, I'm really angry. At that point, me saying, why are you angry is a very logical question. But if I just roll up to someone, roll up to my child, roll up to my partner and I say to him, hey, why are you angry? I would be willing to bet a thousand dollars that the first thing he'd say to me is, Ram, I'm not angry, whether it's true or not. So when you say, why are you angry or why are you annoyed? You're never going to get an accurate answer because it's pretty rare that people are going to cop to it. Number two, you may, you're more likely to get ang you actually get an angry, more defensive reaction from them. I'm not angry. And then number three, especially if you do this to somebody who has a narcissistic personality style, now this whole thing's going to explode. And what's very likely to happen is you may innocently enough say to someone, why are you angry? And then they'll blow up back at you. I'm not angry, but blah, 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 word salad. Okay. So the question becomes, why do we do this? It's okay for me to ask that. Why? Why do we do this? Why do we ask that question? Why are you angry at me? Why are you annoyed at me? Or so the other thing that sometimes a mistake people make, are you mad at me? Are you feeling upset about the relationship? You've just put words in their mouth. Nobody likes having words be put in their mouth. But when you ask that question, why are you angry? Why are you annoyed? Are you not liking this relationship anymore? Are you not feeling it anymore? Are you wishing you were with someone else? Those questions that all make massive assumptions, we all have to be honest with ourselves. When we ask that question, we're asking for reassurance. So the, it, 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 it comes down to you being as clear on your motivations, very clear on your motivations, before you make assumptions about somebody else's. Again, we do it all the time. I must do this 10 times a day. Part of this comes from the anxiety that a person can experience. Now, let's talk first about people who have long-standing histories of narcissistic abuse. It's very easy in those situations where emotion was a mystery when you grew up like that. Like, are they angry? Because if they were angry, parent was angry, older sibling was angry, some other family member was angry. It could have been quite unsettling and catastrophic. Rage, anger, maybe even domestic violence. Like, it was actually helpful. It might have felt strategic or safe if you knew the emotional states of the people in the house. Like, Ooh, if I know dad's angry, then I can stay away from him. So that idea of assuming and making assumptions about other people's emotions might have once served a protective feature, but it doesn't play as well in adulthood. Okay. So is that sense of safety we're trying to create. 
we're also, there's such a sense of unsureness that comes from being gaslighted over a lifetime, or we're not sure of anything. Do they want to be with me? Are they unhappy with me? There's a lot of that can come after lifelong gaslighting or even a history of trauma. So we are often asking for reassurance, but if you're in a relationship with somebody who keeps asking for reassurance, it does become rather exhausting after a while. So you might be thinking, well, what if I see my partner and my partner seems ang angry? What am I supposed to ask them? You can ask them things like, how are you feeling? You doing okay? Um, how's your day going? I'm not saying you're going to get straight answers from them. If you're dealing with a gaslighter, if you're dealing with a narcissist, I'm not saying, are you okay? How are you feeling? Or any of those other things are going to yield you a good answer. But you're less likely to get into a big word salad argument than if you had put the question as, why are you angry at me? Also, think to yourself, how would you feel if somebody came up to you and said to you, why are you angry at me? Because especially if you're not, you're like, mm, I'm not. But if you were, would you give them a straight answer? You know, so we have to really reflect on that question and figure out more clear ways to get our answers. But here's the thing, I cut everyone a break on this. It's a mistake we all make, but I understand where the mistake comes from. It comes from a place of fear, it comes from a place of a lifetime of not even being confident with our own emotions. It comes from a place of, of wanting to create a sense of security. I get where the question comes from, but in a relationship, one of the most dangerous things you can ever do is assume. So it's always best to ask the questions, but the really painful legacy of narcissistic abuses, this is why I'm saying communication doesn't work in narcissistic relationships. Because even if your communication is 100% clear, Hi, how are you? How are you feeling? The odds of you getting gaslighted, probably running about 80%. And then at that point, the whole thing has gone, gone to hell because nobody's communicating clearly at that point. But catch yourself before the next time you try to make assumptions about someone and ask them questions like, why are you angry? Why are you annoyed? Why don't you like me? You've just made an assumption. And sometimes people try to get ahead of it. Like if I ask them this question, then they have to tell me the truth. Ain't nobody telling the truth. So I hope that clears up a little bit of a mistake a lot of us make, even for understandable reasons. So hopefully going forward, you don't keep falling into that trap. And then ask yourself the deeper question, why is it I'm looking for so much reassurance? That might be an issue that's more important to unpack in your own therapy. Thanks again.